protesters gathered outside the British Parliament on Tuesday for a fourth day of demonstrations against men's violence and heavy-handed policing in the wake of the murder of Londoner Sarah Everett. Protesters chanted and held signs as green and purple flares filled the air. The demonstrators referred to the police, crime, sentencing and court bill, under which police forces would be able to impose a start and end time for demonstrations, set a noise limit and shut down protests that have a relevant impact on persons in the vicinity. The opponents of the bill say it will give police too much power to restrict peaceful protests. British police face criticism over clashes with mourners at a vigil on Saturday for Everard, who was abducted as she walked home in South London on March 3rd. A police officer has been charged with her kidnap and murder, provoking a national debate over how British society deals with male violence against women. Sweden's health agency said on Tuesday it was pausing vaccinations against COVID-19 using AstraZeneca's vaccine as a precautionary measure. Germany, France and Italy said on Monday they would stop administering the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine after several countries reported possible serious side effects while the World Health Organization has said there was no proven link. In a statement, the Swedish health agency said it has decided to suspend the use of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine until the European Medicines Agency's investigation into the suspected side effects is done. Sweden's Nordic neighbors Denmark and Norway have reported isolated cases of bleeding, blood clots and a low platelet count after inoculations with the AstraZeneca vaccine. The Swedish Medical Products Agency said on Monday it had recorded 10 cases of blood clots and one case of low levels of platelets among people who were given the AstraZeneca vaccine, but not in combination. Australia said on Wednesday it will seek approval to divert one million of the country's contracted COVID-19 vaccine doses to Papua New Guinea to help the Pacific Island nation contain a dangerous outbreak of infections. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said Canberra would ask AstraZeneca and Europe authorities to grant access to one million doses for Australia's contracted vaccines for Papua New Guinea. He added that Australia will also donate 8,000 locally produced COVID-19 vaccines to PNG as an immediate response to the outbreak. Australia will also suspend all charter flights for two weeks from Wednesday midnight and outbound travel to PNG, the Prime Minister has said. Australian state authorities have also sped up the provisions of the AstraZeneca vaccine to the Torres Strait Islands this week, some of which are only a short boat ride from western PNG. Israel launched a fresh missile strike on positions near the Syrian capital Damascus on Tuesday. State news agency Sana reported that the attack was launched from the Israel-occupied Golan Heights, adding that the Syrian air defenses responded to the attack, intercepting most of the missiles. Residents in the Syrian capital heard sounds of explosions, which later turned out to be the air defense missiles hitting the Israeli missiles in the sky. The whole process lasted about 15 minutes. At present, no injuries were reported in the attack. It's the latest Israeli attack on the military positions near Damascus, where Israeli suspects that the pro-Iran fighters are located. Iran has started enriching uranium at its underground Natanz plant with a second type of advanced centrifuge, the IR-4. The UN nuclear watchdog said in a report that this is a further breach of Tehran's deal with major powers. Iran has recently accelerated its breaches of the deal's restrictions on its nuclear activities in an apparent bid to pressure U.S. President Joe Biden. Tehran's breaches began in 2019 in response to the U.S. withdrawal from the deal and the reimposition of U.S. economic sanctions against Iran under President Donald Trump, who opposed the agreement and sought to wreck it. Last year, Iran started moving three cascades, or clusters, of different advanced models of centrifuge from an above-ground plant at Natanz to its below-ground fuel enrichment plant. The report said Iran has indicated that it now plans to install a second cascade of IR-4 centrifuges at the FEP, but installation of that cascade has yet to begin. Former President Donald Trump said on Tuesday he would decide whether to make another run for the White House after congressional elections in November 2022. Trump has said he is committed to helping fellow Republicans try to win back control of the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate in the 2022 elections. Trump said that based on every poll, his supporters appeared ready to back him again if he ran. Trump has largely stayed out of the political spotlight since leaving office in January, other than his speech at a conservative conference in Florida. Trump has said he will campaign in the 2022 elections for candidates who back him and his policies, and against those Republicans he views as disloyal.
He is also making plans to set up a super PAC political organization to support candidates he endorses. Britain's Prince Philip, the 99-year-old husband of Queen Elizabeth, left the London hospital on Tuesday after a four-week stay for treatment for an infection and to have a heart procedure. Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, was admitted to the King Edward VII's hospital on February 16 after he felt unwell to receive treatment for an unspecified but not COVID-19-related infection. He was transferred briefly at the start of this month to a specialist cardiac center at another London hospital where he underwent a procedure for a pre-existing heart condition. A Reuters witness said the Duke left the King Edward Hospital shortly after 10.30 GMT on Tuesday. There was no immediate comment from Buckingham Palace.